Hello gun enthusiasts and aficionados. This is called the Pre Model 27. It's not a registered Magnum. The registered Magnum was made in 1935 and they only made them for four years. They were a custom made to order gun. This is the uh, Pre Model 27. So it was between 1940 and 1957 somewhere in there because 1957 is when they started putting the model numbers on there it's not perfect it's got some freckling on the faceplate there well, i guess you can have that faceplate refinished but this is the original finish on this thing i've been asked if this gun has been refinished because it's so blue and so shiny but you know you can tell when a gun has been refinished this i've, I've had you know real aficionados tell me that this is the original finish guys that do refinishing for a living. It's got the Patridge target front sight, the incredible top strap checkering. You don't see that. Even the new Model 27, the classic line, they, they do it, but not, it's not like this. The new guns, they have a space right here where they stop checkering or, or stop the grooves because they can't get the grooves lined up perfectly and have a lot of issues with the barrel just a little bit off, you know. But back then, man, everything was so precise. These guns were hand fitted. It's got the pin barrel, of course, five screws. Oh, this is an old gun, five screws. Look at that shine. This is the original factory finish. I can attest to that. Those are not the original grips. The original grips, uh, the original grips have diamonds. These are nice walnut, magna, end frame. This is an end frame revolver. End frame stocks. They're not called grips, they're called stocks, according to Smith & Wesson. And did you know that's not a firing pin? It's actually a hammer nose, according to a Smith & Wesson armor, who's an expert, he's on YouTube. The guy's incredible. That's called a hammer nose. And you know, they're not that fragile. You can dry fire them. It's not gonna kill it. Imagine a 357 round puts a little more stress on it than just look at that action. That cylinder is there. Just waiting for that hammer to fall. That's called that's called staging. I love staging. There's three there's single action, there's double action, and then there's staging. There's kind of like a cross between the two. I love the stage. Look at that. It just holds it there. And when you're ready to fire, it's kind of like single action. One-handed single action. The hammer just falls so effortlessly. It surprises you. It does. It surprises you when it goes off. That's what you want. It's got a groove back strap. Curved front strap, impeccable, glossy, bluing, no holster wear. Who's going to carry a six inch in a holster? Well, that's just Clint Eastwood, of course. But this is basically the same size as the infamous Model 29 2 that Clint Eastwood carried as Inspector Callahan in the Dirty Harry episodes, same size, except that one had a bigger barrel, 44 Magnum. This is a 357 Magnum. Still packs a wallop. <laughs> 357 really kicks <clears throat> if you get the, those big ass, what do you call them? Buffalo bore. <laughs> See, there's no model number in there. That, that tells you it's a uh, Pre-27. It's got a number in there. It's actually the uh, the or work order number so they keep the parts together. Serial number is there. It's on the back of the cylinder and it's on the butt. And uh, there's an S series. End frame. It's got the recessed cylinder. Look at that forcing cone. It's like a freaking cannon. It's it's round all the way around. It doesn't have the flattened area like the Model 19 does, which was a problem sometimes. <clears throat> I 
You always close the cylinder by the by the yoke. That's called a yoke. And that ain't no yoke either. <laughs> I'm serious. No yoking around. So anyway, this is a model 357 Magnum. Pre-27. They still make these today. The Smith & Wesson Classic line. I mean, it's got the lock. <laughs> it's got the Hillary hole. This has a groove trigger, case hardened, hammer and trigger. Did you hear that? Look at that. When you have the, uh, when you have the recessed cylinder, the gap is very small, very minuscule. Butter. Like butter. Look at This gun leaves me speechless. General Patton carried a Model 27, three and a half inch barrel. <clears throat> His infamous line was, one time a reporter asked General Patton, those are nice grips on that gun, are they pearl? General Patton said, no, of course not. They're ivory. Only a pimp from a New Orleans horror house would carry a pearl handled pistol. Model 27, it's so big I can't even get it in the frame. Even though it was introduced in the middle of the Great Depression and it was extremely expensive, Smith & Wesson found itself with backlogs for orders for the four years that it produced a registered Magnum. You know, a lot of law enforcement officers across the country carry the registered Magnum. In 1939, Smith & Wesson stopped production of the registered Magnum because uh, it was, it was replaced with the 357 Magnum. That's this one right here. The Model 27 was noted for its durability. The Model 27 was the revolver used by Jerry Michalik on September 11th, 1999, when he set the world record for the fastest six shots, a reload, and another six shots in 2.99 seconds. Jerry Michalik, my man. They still make it, the current classics line of revolvers. But the grips are narrower. It's got the Hillary hole. So there you have it. 